You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May, putting you in the driver's seat to control your finances. Let's start the Practical Wealth Talk about alternatives to Wall Street. Welcome to The uh, Practical Wealth Show. I wanted to record a short podcast because I had something on my on my mind on my heart that just happened recently and I had shared this uh, as I'm recording this I've just gotten back from the uh, summit for prosperity economic advisors and I was uh, sharing with somebody thought it was you know I thought it was actually kind of funny where I'll say in the title of this episode is called don't die for free and what and you know the power of life insurance you know we talk about and you're going to hear recordings as I do this of you know people talking about real estate and you know alternative investments we're going to get into and you know business and we're going to cover the best way to keep your health care costs down don't get sick and you know you have the power to control that so we're going to get into some research that we've done there but we I just had a situation where uh, I had a uh, One of my young cousins, 23 years old, was uh, gunned down here in Philly, shot five times over something stupid, some coward. You know, apparently it was over a a female. They, you know, broke it up. The guy guy came back and like, you know, it's cool, man. We, you know, we are right. And uh, or so we so we thought and came at him to shake his hands, but instead shot him five times. It ran away and left him out in the street uh, dying. He ended up passing away, you know, in the hospital uh, after, you know, major surgeries, you know, a day later or so. That is crazy. But here's the thing. So one of the things, and so as I, sh- I relayed this story to somebody, and it's, you know, it's helpful as an advisor, you know, at, at the core. See, to me, the core of all planning is insurance. And um, because you need to bet on certainty because we're going to pass away. Now, you know, we focus on, you know, you know, running your personal economy like a bank. And we show people how to use insurance as a whole life insurance as a place to, as the best place to store your cash. But, you know, let's talk about I'm going to talk about for a few minutes today the, 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 the death benefit. You know, we show people how to use insurance to buy real estate and vacations and all these cool living things that you could do. But folks... We are going to die. And unfortunately, sometimes our, you know, nobody is my biggest, you know, fear is to, is to have something happen to to one of our children. But, you know, you're going to be, I always tell people, look, don't be emotionally devastated and financially devastated. So, you know, you have to, you know, let protect the things that are important to you, you know, from the get go. And so here is what I was sharing with the advisors was that, you know, we need people, we need to be out there, you know, as advisors within our family, within the people that we know that can help people through situations. Now, you know, the, my cousin is not, wasn't at the time, but she will be after, you know, by the time this goes out because she called me. So listen, I want you to handle all my stuff. You know, she had a plan and, uh, you know, he came off the plan, you know, at 21 and, you know, she didn't know it, but she put him on a new plan. So by the time she got it set up, you know, he'd been on it for, you know, 15 months or so. And so if you don't know about insurance, there's a contestability period. You know, it's called it every every policy has a two year contestability clause, you know. So she called the company and it said it said that. But what they heard was, you know, it's contestable. This is not going to pay. So she called with the funeral director. The funeral director, all they heard was, I mean, we may not get paid. And he didn't want to touch it. So they had, you know, people have to do GoFundMes and, you know, those type of things. That's that's a shame, you know, in the community, in our in the community that I uh, serve a lot. And um, that's ridiculous for, you know, people to have to do that kind of stuff where you can insure that for, you know, 15, 20, 30, 100 dollars a month, whatever you're trying to do a month. And so this person was 23, you know, really arguably they should with it with a child, they should have their own. But she had a fifteen thousand dollar policy on him. But here's the thing, you know, they were seeming like it was contestable. They were going to pay. So in the midst of all this stuff, she's got to worry about, you know, I've been paying for this thing and now they're telling me it's not going to pay. 
And, you know, so by the time I got over the house, they were like, well, we got to call, you know, where's Cousin Curtis? So we got to call Curtis. He knows about this stuff. And so I was able to, couldn't do it that night because it was later. But the next morning, we were able to call the company, put her on speaker. You know, I, you know, contestable means that if it's within, just so you know, the two years, they will investigate it. Because if you lied on the app, you misstated something, you had cancer, but you, you and you knew it. And you didn't disclose it, you know, they'll just give you back all the money uh, for your policy, right? And or if you committed a felony, you know, if you were insured, but you were, you know, uh, dealing drugs or you robbed a bank or you involved in some that or you committed suicide. Well, you know, or you, you know, for the old people say, oh, I don't want insurance on on somebody and and, oh, you know, my wife's going to kill me because I got all this insurance. Well, don't worry. Insurance doesn't pay if you do that. Uh, with their, their fall play because they're going to investigate. Nobody's going to give away money without, you know, oh, you're a nice guy. Let's just, here, here's a check. That is not, that's not how it works. So, but none of that was the case. So that claim is going to get paid, you know. So, I, you know, I've got to, I'm helping her, you know, file, you know, make sure that we, we file it correctly and uh, basically helping her do the paperwork and get it out there because she's a little confused by the whole thing. And so I'm thankful that I know how to do this, that I can help people, you know, with this stuff. Unfortunately, you know, I've paid 10 or 12 of these in my in my career. So people do die with this stuff. And I was telling young advisors, I said, look, this is not a joke, okay? And I don't want to be the one in there to take a little check. You know, if you've got family and you're working, you know, you've got to look at what your human life value is, you know, because a lot of people say, well, you know, I got... 100,000 or I got 200,000 but you're making 50, 60,000 dollars a year. That is nothing, okay? And so you're underinsured. If you look at your human life value, if you were in 911, if you look at the the how they sell the cases, they use a, a formula called human life value. What is the money that you'll work will make over your productive working lifetime and then they create claims based upon that. Well, why do they think you're worth more than you think you're worth. So I would dare say most people are, are underinsured. And so, you know, and so you have the ability to make sure that your uh, family, your kids, you know, the charities that are important to you, you know, with a stroke of a pen, you can create lump sums of tax-free wealth. And so now you've built, you started with what you're trying to do, which is create a legacy for your family, and you can do it with leverage. And so, you know, where fortunately I was able to, 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 going back to the story, help her solve her, at least put her peace of mind, where at least she didn't have to worry about that stuff. You know, I could, you know, do my part. You know, I'm not going to fry chicken and bring it over, but, you know, I can do, help out with my expertise. And I said, you know, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not one to come over crying and all that kind of stuff. I always joke that I went to the John Shaft School of Sensitivity. Um, but she knows I love her and I care. And But she says, look, because I don't need that. I need you clear-headed so you can help me with this stuff. You know, we got I got other people that are doing that aspect, you know. So I, I do what I do and say, so know that about me. Call me Mr. Spock. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, and so we're able to help with that. So I felt really good that and I've done that, you know, with other clients and with, you know, friends and neighbors that were they know I've done that stuff. And, you know, we're able to 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 help that. And I tell you, know, I told the advisors, you know, we have to somebody has to be that go to person uh, in the community, in your family. For starters, you know, in my family, that was my father. My father was a successful business person. We owned a supermarket in Philly. You know, my grandfather was in business, you know, so I always tell people I never got that go to school. I'll talk about this later, you know, get a good job talk, you know. Uh, my dad said you never make any money work with somebody else, but he was successful. My grandfather, so they were kind of like the, uh, my cousin told me, the patriarchs, patriarch, yeah, of the May family uh, in terms of, you know, successful of, of, you know, perceived knowledge. They were actually, you know, both very learn it uh f- from a practical standpoint you know wise people successful people um with a lot of common sense and a lot of savvy so that was you know i'd be blessed that, that i'm trying to carry that legacy uh, 
and keep and pass that on to our kids because it's not see even just about money. You know, when you talk about a legacy or wealth, you know, you've got to pass on wealth and wisdom. Right? And so if you how you know, so how are you capturing that? How are you passing down the stories uh within your family? One time I was listening to uh Tom Jordan, there was a guy on there talking about, you know, he had somebody in his family that had not missed a day of work and something like crazy, like 45 years or 50 years, not even late. And that missed a day, he wasn't even late. And so, and I'm sure, you know, you have colds, you have sickness, you have things going in your family. But see, so if you know that, that's a legacy of, you know, of toughness that, you know, you've got to show up. You know, half of winning is showing up, you know. And so I'll tell my kids, so listen, oh, you, I just need a mental health day. Listen, what? <laughs> You're, you don't have no problems. Get your behind up and get to work because half of winning is showing up and uh you know you know sometimes we do but i want them to understand that you know you've got to be tough you've got to have a legacy of toughness but you know the main thing and the point of this talk was to understand that uh you know you need to look at your you know make sure you know you need to one so here's a couple of lessons right one don't just have insurance on your job all right that's the first thing i look at that as a supplement you need to have your own plan because you know i always tell people you can get fired for one any of two reasons any reason or no reason at all and so a lot of times the coverage is not here's the word portable you know it can't go with you you got group insurance or if it does go with you it can't go with you at the same price and so what people take for granted is that you'll be insurable you know i wanted to up i'm going to upgrade mine but i i was uh after after this you know we've got i tell people look we've got you know a lot but you know i want more i, I always tell people i want my kids to make money the really old-fashioned way i want them to inherit it right and um because you know poverty is no great creator of character <laughs> right last time i checked and so you know, you want to be able to, like it says in the Bible, a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So while you're out there building your business, trying to make your fortune, well, what if you don't make it? Well, you know, insurance makes sure that that happens. Insurance is a love product, and it's the only thing that guarantees, guarantees, okay, that what you want to happen will happen. All right? So you start with that. You have to start your plan with certainty. All right. And you begin with the end in mind. So you make that you lay that as your foundation now. So you got to make sure that you want to make sure that, you know, we help people solve for the first thing is human life value. All right. And so people say, well, what kind should you get? Should you get terms? Should you get this and that? Is it what's better? Look, it's it's yes and yes. Should you have term? Yes. If your goal and right now your budget allows you to only saw get the most you can so here's term insurance you want to get the if your need right now is to get the most coverage you can for the least amount of money well what solves that problem term okay now that's only in a short period because most people outlive the 20 or 30 years so it's going to go up and when it goes up you probably ain't going to be able to afford it but you start with that because you can always convert it just to you know not get too insurancy but you know you can convert it over we like whole life over you know index universal life some other stuff that you that you'll hear about in other sources because i like certainty i like guarantees you know and uh so i don't you know i, I know how that works i know it gets more efficient and it's a great place to store cash so we generally help people do both um and we just tend to use the whole life as a place to we generally solve for minimum death benefit maximum accumulation so we usually solve for you know how little insurance you can get as up to IRS regulations and then we overfund it so it becomes a very efficient cash accumulation tool but it's nothing wrong with term okay so only by tell you different it's never the the product it's always about the strategy what, what problem are you trying to solve and so you you need to you know I don't really believe in buy term investor difference anymore because that's stupid once you <laughs> I hate to say it, I come out of that world. So I used to be evangelical about buy term investor difference. I was a regional vice president for twelve years with a company that did that. But I'm gonna tell you 
you know that that what some people call the theory of decreased responsibility that doesn't work because once you understand state planning with theory of decreasing responsibility says that in the early years you need a lot of coverage which is true because you don't have any money but in the later years as your savings and investments grow that you'll become self-insured and you can let your insurance go that's ridiculous all right first of all that's based on the assumption the stock market always goes up and and it's also a myth of self-insurance and so that is uh we'll have another talk where i go in that in detail or call me if you have a question about that but that is you never not need insurance all right and you know what you want to do is have both okay and insurance is and, and well, I'm going to go there, but basically, you know, you want to have both. So because I've had people, most people don't die within a term. Less than one percent of term policies pay off because people outlive the term. Insurance companies know that, so they're going to collect premiums three or four years on something that's not going to pay. And that's all. What ground? What's the ROI on that? You know, you're you're collecting money that you never have to pay out on, and then people drop the the daggone thing. So that's the reality. Those are statistics. So, but you know, people do. And I've paid those, okay? And so it's important. So, folks, you've got to begin with the end in mind. Yes, you need to save. And you need then you need to invest, So you know, which is another talk. So you got to save from income, invest from assets, but you need to play defense from the get-go, you know, and make sure that, you know, you look at your coverages. Make sure how you have your beneficiaries designated to where you want them to go. You know, if you've got a second marriage, you need to check your beneficiaries to make sure, you know, is your coverage going where you want it to go uh, to your kids, grown kids, whatever. You need to look at all that kind of stuff. So with that, I just want to share a little, you know, short lesson just on something that I'm experiencing. I'm helping people through right now. And those are the, you know, some of the things, you know, and it's not exciting, right? Uh, to me, it's exciting. But you know, everybody wants to talk about, oh, I want to hear, should I invest in Alibaba? Should I do this and that? Listen, don't you, you need to be, you need to start with the basics. And um, you need to learn how to, to use a football expression. You got to learn how to block and tackle. So as you build your personal economy, as you grow your personal economy, you need to start with defense. Okay? Defense. You need to manage your cash flow. You need to eliminate non-preferred debt. You need to make sure that you have adequate protection from the door and... You have an emergency fund. See, you. I don't even want to talk about. You don't even talk to me about any of that stuff unless till you have that in place because you don't have a solid foundation for your financial house. So with that, I want to just record a short episode. You know, so the power of this don't die for free. The power of life insurance. You know, check out uh, Practical Wealth. You know, you can give me an email out to uh, Kurt May at gmail dot com and I'll send you a a, a white paper. Uh, we have on the you know the on the power of this and understanding you know the different types of insurance and the power of what you can do with this stuff and uh, so I just want to get this out there hopefully this will be helpful it's just something that I'm going through and I know that uh, a lot of people have had death in their family and uh, some of you know people would have had to have GoFundMes and you know all kinds of stuff that's just absolutely unnecessary so not to end on a down note but you guys you know you have a great day and uh, keep listening for our next episode thanks for listening to Practical Wealth to access the show notes and resources go to practicalwealthshow.com to get your questions on the show go to practicalwealthshow.com This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.